Students, this is the circle video problem for your study guide. Please remember for your study guide that this is going to be due the same day as your quiz, which will be on August the 27th if you're an A-Day student, and August the 28th if you're a B-Day student. As you're working through this, you should work problems 1 through 38 in pencil, showing all work in detail. Then get out your red pen and correct problems 1 through 38. If it's correct, use a star or smiley or something like that. If it's incorrect, you must show a correction for it in the margin. You are to do problems 39 through 44 all your own. Those problems will be graded on accuracy, so if you need extra help for anything, come in during optional first, uh, excuse me, I have optional second tutorial And if you have optional first tutorial, you should see Mrs. Cronquist in room 221. You may also see me luncheon after school. All right. We're going to be working, partially working through the circle video problems. So taking a look here at number one. Okay, step number one is to distribute and collect like terms. Collect like terms. Do not start canceling right across yet. We must collect like terms. So first, let's collect like terms on the left, and then let's see what we can do on the right. So here on the left, I'm going to collect these P's. So I have that 6 minus 2p, 6 minus 2p, so that's 4p. And then I'm going to collect these, 8 plus 2, that's 10, equals. Then over here, we're going to circle negative 2, distribute, circle negative 8 distribute. Always circle and draw the distributive lines. That's negative 2 times 4, that's negative 8p. Negative 2 times 7, so that's minus 14. Negative 8 times positive 6, so that's minus 48. Negative 8 times negative 6p. Negative times a negative makes that positive, so that's plus. 48p. Now we're going to come over here and collect the p's. So I collect like terms and I'm going to underline my non-p's. Bring this down. 4p plus 10 equals, so that's 48p minus 8p, so that's 40p. And then negative 14 minus 48. Now look here in the margin, just to show you what this looks like. Imagine if this is 0. And then going upwards, this is positive. Going downwards, this is negative. If I'm at negative 14, I'm down here. You count as if you're going here, that's negative 14. Negative 48 means I go down farther 48 times. And you ask yourself where you're going to be. So technically, you can see that you're adding 14 and 48. So I'm going to do this right here in the margin. 4 plus 8 is 12. Carry the 1. And that's 62. But we're at negative 62. So minus 62. Okay, now your goal, now that you've collected everything, you take a look here. Is there anything else left to collect over here? No. Anything else to collect or manipulate over here? No. So then you start canceling. So I'm going to go minus 4p, minus 4p, these cancel, and then you go ahead and finish the problem from here.
P's on one side, numbers on the other, and solve for the variable. Taking a look at number four. Your goal in number four is to find a way to first and foremost get rid of those fractions. I know how much you love fractions. So step number one, start by circling all of the different denominators. Circle the denominators. Then I would like you to go back and darken that equal sign. Now we have 3 and 2 and 3 and 2. Your goal is to find the lowest common denominator of 3 and 2. Both 3 and 2 go into 6, and that is your lowest common denominator. So I'm going to go like this, parentheses, giant parentheses. I'm going to put my 6 over here on the right. Okay, now follow with me. Ready? Circle to 3, arrow to 6, 3 goes into 6 two times, bring this arrow back around, so we have a baby 2 here. Now you ask yourself 2 times 2, that's going to be 4, bring down the x. Let's try the next one. Ready? Circle the 2, arrow to 6. Two goes into six three times. Bring that around. Little baby three here. Three times three is nine. There's no x there. Bring down the minus sign. Ready? Circle the three. Arrow to six. Three goes into six twice. Bring around that baby two. Two times four is eight. Check. There's no variable. Very important. Bring down that equal sign. Don't lose track of that equal sign. Ready? Circle the 2. Arrow to 6. 2 goes into 6 three times. Bring around that 3. 3 times 1. 3. You can take it from there. Follow the same process for the problem right before it. Okay, we're going to simplify problem 70. Simplify 70. I'm going to show you both methods. One I'm going to call going out on the date. So I'm just going to call that the date method. The other one is getting out of jail. Okay, so going out on the date method, you simply start by factoring. And if it's even, I just like to use 2. So I'm going to factor this up. You can follow with me. We have 2 and 40. That's still even, so 2 and 20. Still even, 2 and 10. 2 and 5. Okay, now you look at, you do not look at the branches. So we're not looking here. You're looking only at the leaves and you're looking for dates. We have a pair of 2's, another pair of 2's. So the storyline is, if you have a date, you get to go out. So on the outside, there's a 2. On the outside, there's another 2. Put a dot, because there's going to be times here. This 5 here has no date, stays under the radical sign. So 2 times 2 is 4. Radical 5 is the correct answer. Now, getting out of jail. Getting out of jail, your goal is to work with only two factors, but you want one of them to be perfect. So you think of your perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 25, those perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. And if you were multiply, I know 16 goes into 80 five times. So I'm going to go 5 and 16. Now here's your storyline. 
16 is perfect. If you're perfect, you get parole. But you must have a change of heart. Use either method. You're going to simplify each of these problems. Okay, number 10. When you're dealing with these problems, your first order of business is to simplify each of the radicals. That's your first order of business. So we need to go through and ask yourself if you can simplify these. So taking a look here, we're going to see if we can't simplify 24, which we can. So I'm going to break it down. We have 2 and 12 and 2 and 6 and 2 and 3. So we have here this 2 comes out and then we have to multiply it by what's outside. So 2 square root of 24 becomes 4 and then we have a 2 and a 3 here square root of 6. So this here became that. Let's try this one and see what happens. So 54, we can do 2 and 27, 3 and 9, 3 and 3. So we ask ourselves, who can come out? And the 3 and 3 comes out. So we're going to have 3 times 3. Don't forget there's a minus sign, so it's going to be minus 9 square root of, and then these two stay under the radical, 6. Then here, if you break it down, there's no date, so we do minus root 6. You can't break that down anymore. Let's try this last one. 3 and 9 and 3 and 3. We can bring out a 3 here. There's nothing to multiply it by. Make sure you don't drop that minus sign. So minus 3 square root of 3. Now from here, we're going to add or subtract. Find alike radicals. Our alike radicals are right here. Square root of 6, square root of 6, square root of 6. So we're going to do 4 minus 9 minus 1. 4 minus 9 is going to end up being negative 5. Minus 1 again is negative 6. So we have negative 6 root 6 minus 3 root 3 and that's as far as you can go because when the radicals do not match you are done. This would be the same as if it was negative 6x minus 3y. When the radicals are not alike, you cannot add or subtract. That's as far as you can go. Number 13. Now we're going to distribute a radical. So start by circling root 6. And now we're going to distribute to both. Draw the little distributive lines. So root 6 times 2, outies and innies don't really talk to each other. Root 6 is an innie, 2 is an outie, so when you multiply them, you end up with simply 2 root 6. Plus, now these two are innies. So root 6 times root 2 is going to be square root of 12. Now you're not quite done because root 12 can be broken down. Two, and, uh, 2 times 6 and 2 times 3. The 2's are perfect, so they're going to come out. So your final answer, 2 root 6 
plus the twos come out two square root of three. Your radicals cannot simplify any farther, so this is your final answer. All right, number 18. Okay, the steps that we did in the, our handout is step number one is that we clear the basement. Then we prime factor and you simplify. So clear, factor, simplify. Those are the steps that I want you to follow. So step number one. We're going to clear this radical from the basement by multiplying top and bottom by root 15. That's called clearing. So I'm going to bring this right here, bring it down, so I have 2 root 9 times 15. Those 15 go in, and then 5 times 15. Do not immediately multiply. Now, we factor. You prime factor. You bring everything down to prime numbers. So 2, I'm going to factor 9, which is 3 times 3. And the factor 15, which is 3 times 5. And I take go down here. And I have 5. And here is going to be prime factored 3 times 5. Okay, now you ask yourself if you can take any dates out of the radical, which we can. There's 3 times 3, there's 2 of them, so they get to come out. So next line's going to read. Again, do not actually multiply. We're going to have 3 times 2 times 3 times 5. Remember that 3 came out. And down below, I have 5 times 3 times 5 again. Now we're done factoring. Now we can simplify. Now work with outies, work with innies. Take a look here. There's nothing under the radical here to simplify. So you're done here. So we're going to work with outies. We have one three here and a three here. And that's pretty much all we can do. So our final answer is going to be 2 square root of 15 over 25. So your steps again, clear, factor, simplify. It says find the slope of each line. Now just a quick recap of slope. When slope goes up from left to right, it's positive. When slope goes down from left to right, it's negative. A completely horizontal line means I have no rise. And since it's rise over run, that means it's zero over something, so it's just zero. If I have a vertical line, that means I have no left, right, I have no run. So it's rise over run, and this is undefined. Okay, so step number one, I trace this. I can see right now, I know it's a positive slope. So my final answer must be positive. So I take a look, and so I count my rise and my run. I'm just going to bunny hop this. One, two, three, four. One, two. Or I could have gone this way. That would be my run of 2 and my rise of 4. Either way, my rise, my rise is going to be 4. My run is 2, and it's a positive line. So technically, 2 goes into 4. I'm going to have 2 over 1. 
and that would be my slope. You can also do this mathematically. If you get this point here, I am over 2 and up 1, 2, 3. So my coordinates here are 2, comma 3. And my coordinates here is 0, comma negative 1. So I'll show you how to do it mathematically between those two points. I have 0, negative 1 and 2, comma 3. I'm going to do rise over run. Rise is the difference of the y's. The difference of the y. So I go y minus y. Negative 1 minus 3. Run is the difference of the x's. So rise is the delta difference of the y's. Run is the delta difference of the x's. So I go 0 minus 2. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And I get the same thing. Check. It says sketch a graph of each line. So taking here, step number one, I rewrite the equation. y equals mx plus b. So come over here, I circle the b. Now come up here, circle the b, and I see my b, or my y-intercept, is going to be negative 4. So I start. That's my y-intercept. Now, I circle M, I circle my slope, my slope is 8 over 5, a couple notes, I know it's going to be positive, so it has to go up from left to right. So my rise is going to be 8, my run is going to be 5. So I rise 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to go to the right this time because it's positive, and I run 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's y equals 8 over 5x minus 4. All right, for 27, notice it's not when y equals mx plus b. It is in standard form. So there's a couple ways to do this. One is to change it to y equals mx plus b. The second method would be to do intercepts. So 0, blank, blank, 0. I'm going to show both methods. You can use either method, whatever makes sense to you. So step number one, I'm going to rewrite this here, 5x plus 2y equals 6. To change to y equals mx plus b, start by circling y. Now your goal is to get y all by itself. So you're going to, I'm going to start here by bringing the 5x over. So I minus 5x, minus 5x. Next line reads, 2y equals, I'm going to bring the x first, minus 5x plus 6. Now I need to get rid of the 2. That's 2 times y, so the opposite is divide. Make sure you divide both terms by 2. That cancels. So I get y equals negative 5 over 2x. 2 goes into 6 3 times, plus 3. Now, let's do the intercepts. You bring the equation here. So 5x plus 2y equals 6. If I put a 0, 
in the x term, 0 in the x, we simply say goodbye to it. So I'm going to scratch it out, or you can just put your thumb over it. So I have negative 2 y, I have positive 2 y equals 6. If I divide both sides by 2, y is going to equal 6 over 2, which is 3. Now, I go back, and here, if I put a 0 in the y, say goodbye to this, I end up with 5x equals 6. Divide both sides by 5, so x equals 6 over 5. 5 goes in there once with 1 left over, so 1 and 1 fifth. So this becomes here 1 and 1 fifth. Now, let's see if this actually worked. We're going to graph this line here. This line right here, let's graph it. Now notice our intercept, our y-intercept is positive 3. So we go positive 3. And our slope is negative, so it goes down from left to right. So I'm going to count down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I want it to slope downward, so I'm going to go to the right, 2, 1, 2. Technically, I could have gone this way as well, up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I could have gone left 2, 1, 2. You'd end up with the same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead. And graph that. Now let's use the intercept method. We graph 0, negative 3, that's this right here. 0, oh, excuse me, positive 3. Now let's graph 1 and 1 fifth and 0, so 1 and then a little bit beyond it. 1 fifth and 0. And you see you get the exact same line. So you can use either method, y equals mx plus b, or the intercept method. It says write the slope-intercept form of each line. So let's define what is the slope-intercept. That's y equals mx plus b. So let's look at what you actually need here. You need an m, which is your slope. And you need a B, which is your y-intercept. So let's take a look over here. Where does this line intersect the y-axis? You see right here it intersects at negative 1. Now, let's check the slope out. So let's start at negative 1, find another point where it crosses the exact axis. That's this point here. So now let's count our rise and our run. Our rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our run, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we know it's a positive line. So our slope, our rise is 5, our run is 4, and it's a positive line. So once again, it's y equals mx plus b. y equals our slope is 5 over 4 x, and our b is minus 1. So that is the correct equation for 33. Follow the same process, finding the slope and the y-intercept, and write it out. I'm going to shrink this up so we can read the instructions. It says, write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line given a point with a given slope. 
Okay, so our ultimate goal here is to end up with a y equals mx plus b equation. Now we're given a slope and we're given a point, which technically is we're given an x and a y. So let's write this out. y equals mx plus b. Let's look at what we already have. Ready? See slope? Circle negative 1. See slope here? Circle it. You're going to take that negative 1 and plunk it right in there. So we have y equals negative 1x plus b. So we already have this part of our equation. Now ask yourself, what are you missing? We're missing the b. But look at what we do have. Always ask yourself, well, what can I do? Let's look at what we actually do have. We have an x term and we have a y term. Ready? Our x term. Circle it. Come over here. Circle x. So we're going to plug in that x term right there. Ready? Circle the y. See that y term? We're going to plug it in over here. Why? Because we can. Look, now you can solve for what b would be. So I have negative 2 equals, this becomes positive 2 plus b, minus 2 both sides. So this is negative 4 equals b. Now we have all our components because we need y equals mx plus b. So our final equation is y equals our m is already negative 1, x plus our b is negative 4. So we're going to change that plus to a minus sign. And there is your equation. That is the equation of the line that has a slope of negative 1 and goes through the point negative 2, 2.